All right. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Tushar Mehta, orthopedic surgeon and your faculty of orthopedics. And today this YouTube live is to help you with the uh, tackling questions that came in INICET November 2023 from the subject of orthopedics. See, before I begin, I just want to tell you that the framework of the question can be different according to the different perceptions. You may have a different perception, other students may have a different perception. So I got feedback from a lot of you. I made a question, I wanted to make a framework of the question, but then I realized that at the end of the day, it is more important for you to recall the entire topic rather than just the question. So there was a diagram which was asked and in that diagram, uh, they had given uh, just fibula. I've given femur also, to be also, that's another bonus. But in that photograph, in that image-based question, in that first question uh, of orthopedics that I want to discuss, they had given an image of a bone called fibula. In the fibula, they had shown, they had labeled this. They had labeled something like this. And then they had asked you a question that uh, if there is an injury to the bone here, what kind of a gait will be seen? They did not ask about the bone. They did not ask about the nerve, they asked about the gait. So everybody knows that in proximal fibula, everybody knows that in proximal fibula, you have a nerve called as common peroneal nerve. And I'm sure you all can see the common peroneal nerve making a look. Now, if there is an injury of this area, let us say if there is a fracture of this area, you will definitely have common peroneal nerve injury. So, fracture of the proximal fibula will give you a common peroneal nerve injury and this common peroneal nerve injury will essentially give rise to something which is what is called as foot drop. Alright, so CPN injury, common peroneal nerve injury will give rise to something which is what is called as foot drop. Alright, so we'll have a foot drop there. Now, foot drop will give you what kind of a gait? There were four options. So question was not about the nerve and the bone, as I said, question was about the gait. So they had mentioned four types of gait, you know, high steppage gait, scissoring gait, trundle and burr gait, and antalgic gait. So whatever they mentioned doesn't matter. We will remember the answer as, we will remember the answer as high steppage gait. I'm sure you all know that if you have a foot drop in foot drop to avoid that drop, you will have a, you will have a high steppage gait. Saurabh is absolutely right. So this was the first question. Well, uh, this is something which has been asked uh, in the past as well. Then there was another question on this omnipresent MCQ on this inevitable topic called as Pankart lesion. Now, there is nothing much for me to tell you because if you, if you have attended the lectures before, you must be aware that, you know, when we talk about shoulder, it's a, a glenohumeral joint, it's a ball and socket joint where the anatomy is very disproportionate because an X-sized glenoid has to accommodate four times bigger size head of the humerus than this glenoid is lined by a layer of fibrocartilage called a labrum. If the labrum gets evolves from here, that is what is called as Beckhart lesion. So technically, if you have an evolution of glenoid labrum, from antero inferior part, from antero inferior margin or part that is called as Benkart lesion. It is the most common cause of recurrent anterior shoulder dislocation. At the same time, you had something which is called as hill sac lesion. Now, in hill sac's lesion, you do have a bony defect. And this bony defect, I'm sure you all can see as well, this bony defect can be seen at the posterior lateral aspect of head of humerus. All right. So it can be seen at the posterior lateral aspect of head of humerus. That is basically hill sacs lesion. It is the second most common cause. Now, everybody knew this. Let me just put it out for you. Uh, yes, Dr. Watson is absolutely right. When I was preparing like you, I used to remember Bankart lesion as Bankart antero-inferior glenoid rim or labrum. 
question was like this that Benkart lesion is antero inferior glenoid labral avulsion, antero superior glenoid avulsion, defect in blah blah head, defect in blah blah head. So, first of all, it is not head, it is glenoid in glenoid, it is not anterior, it is not posterior, it is anterior, it is not superior, it is inferior, simple as that. So, this was the framework of the question with the correct answer. This was the second question. I have just shown you the arthroscopic Benkart repair. So, the labral flap which has been avulsed, which has been avulsed will be repositioned back and then you know fixed with suture anchors there was a third question i hope you remember on three bony point relationship now in three bony point relationship just remember that if your elbow is in flexion then these three bony points which are olecranon lateral epicondyle middle epicondyle they will make a triangle but if your elbow is in extension, then these three bony points, they will come in one single straight line. So you can see if your elbow is in extension, one single straight line. If your elbow is in flexion, they will make a triangle. They will make a triangle if your elbow is in flexion. Now, in which condition do you think that this three bony point relationship will be kept normal? In which condition do you think that this three bony point relationship will be altered? So if I say that it will be normal, then it is supracondylar fracture humerus. Why? Because that is the only fracture which is above the level of the bony point. Where do you think it will be altered? See, you fracture lateral condyle humerus, you fracture middle condyle humerus, you fracture all the relationship will be altered. Relationship is made between three bony points. You break either of them. You understand? You break either of them. Relationship will be altered. In which condition you will find a reversal of the three bony point relationship where everything gets reversed? That is what is posterior elbow dislocation. I got a message from some of the students that they had asked three bony point relationship will be maintained. In. So, answer has to be supracondylar humerus. Then there was a percentage of the student who said, Sir, they had asked actually where, where do you where you are not where you where you will be seeing the reversal of the relationship. So, answer will be posterior elbow dislocation. So all up to individual perception then there was this fourth question which how do i say i mean this is something which is an overlapping topic between anatomy orthopedics and radiology primarily orthopedics and radiology they gave an image of an mri and they asked you to identify the ligament now most of you told me that they had asked to identify acl but somebody said no sir there was a ligament which is going from front to the back so i thought i'll just show you an image which shows a ligament coming from the posterior part of the intercondylar notch of the femur and going towards the anterior part of the typical spine of the tibia, that is what is called as ACL. Something which is coming from anterior part of the intercondylar notch of the femur and going to the posterior part of the proximal part of the typical spine, that is what is called as PCL. Bottom line will always remain the same, that ACL and PCL, ACL is important in downhill because in neat, in neat you do expect this question for sure. ACL is important in downhill downstair activity. ECL is important in uphill upstair activity. All right. ACL is important in downhill downstair. PCL is important in uphill upstair. ACL is seen in um, ACL injury is seen in hyperextension mechanism. PCL injury is seen in hyperflexion mechanism. So you have to remember it like this. All right. So ACL and PCL they are very very important for all of you. When you go downhill, when you go downstairs, what happens? Let me tell you what happens. Tibia first, femur follows, tibia first, femur follows, tibia first, femur follows again, tibia first. Out of these two, which is the bigger one? Femur. Who will be under stress? Femur. What will be the stress? That my tibia should not go excessively anterior. So what does femur say? Femur says, ACL. I know you come from posterior part of the intercondyle and notch of the femur and you go to the anterior part of the tibial spine of the tibia. ACL, you have to go to tibia and tell tibia that tibia cannot go excessively anterior so the purpose of acl is to ensure that there is no excessive anterior translation of tibia imagine if acl is gone do you think there will be a stoppage of the anterior translation of tibia no so there will be excess anterior translation of tibia with respect to femur when acl is torn yes similarly if we see pcl uphill upstairs how Femur first to be follows, femur first to be follows, femur first to be follows, femur first. Bigger one, femur. Who's under stress? Femur. What is the stress? That my tibia should not sag behind. Tibia should not lag behind. So femur says, PCL, you are going to tibia and you have to ensure that tibia does not sag behind. So therefore, I tell you that ACL is important in downstairs. PCL is important in 
आप हिल अपस्टेयर दिस वाज अनदर लेवल ऑफ क्वेश्चन देन देयर वाज अ फिफ्थ क्वेश्चन व्हिच वाज एक्चुअली ऑन अ क्लासिफिकेशन व्हिच वाज एक्चुअली ऑन अ क्लासिफिकेशन बाय द नेम ऑफ हॉकिंस क्लासिफिकेशन दैट वाज ऑन द नेम ऑफ अ क्लासिफिकेशन कॉल्ड एज हॉकिंस क्लासिफिकेशन एंड दिस हॉकिंस क्लासिफिकेशन इज बेसिकली सीन इन व्हिच कंडीशन फैक्टर नेक ऑफ टैलस Hawkins classification is basically seen in fracture neck of talus so if you have a undisplaced fracture of the neck of talus you have type 1 if you have a displaced fracture with subtalar joint dislocation this is type 2 if you have type 2 plus talo navicular joint dislocation that is type 3 if you have type 3 plus plus tibio talar joint dislocation that will be type 4 all right now hawkins classification is there and there is something which is called as hawkins sign now what do you mean by hawkins sign you should know hawkins sign See, whenever fracture neck of talus is there, we all are sure. Since talus has got a retrograde blood supply, we all are sure that we will expect a vascular necrosis of the body of the talus. It's a fact that in first four to six weeks, even starts. But then you know what happens after four to six weeks? Revascularization happens. So because of the avascular necrosis. because of the avascular necrosis sclerosis starts developing but when after 4 to 6 weeks revascularization happens this sclerosis starts getting converted into what lucency so that means avm which has appeared will now disappear avm which has appeared will now disappear and is that a good sign or a bad sign that's a good sign that's a sign of good outcome or a bad outcome good outcome is that a sign of revascularization or devascularization revascularization so this is what is called as hawkins sign that is why i want all of you to remember that fracture neck of talus the most common complication is not is not is not avascular necrosis it is subtalar arthritis <clears throat> so this was about your question number 5 i hope it makes sense to all of you Question number six was basically very simple. Not female, but female symmetrical arthritis. The moment it is symmetrical, I don't want to talk about osteoarthritis because that is always asymmetrical. I'm not saying unilateral. I'm saying asymmetrical. It will be bilateral, but it will be asymmetrical. One joint will be involved earlier and more in osteoarthritis. multiple joints involvement bilateral <laughs> deciding criteria rheumatoid psoriatic gout everywhere you can have polyarthralgia uh, so you can have bilateral you can have female you can have symmetrical but a typical bony stiffness will take you towards a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis dr raish is absolutely right now in this one liners I don't know whether they were asking which is true, which is false, or which is except. I don't. Know. I will just give you a fact. Most common fracture in wrist is scaphoid. Most common bone to get dislocated is lunate. Most common fracture in wrist is scaphoid. Two. glass holding cast is for fracture scaphoid true most common site i'm just telling you for information most common site of fracture scaphoid is waist that is also true most common complication of fracture scaphoid it is not avascular necrosis it is non new it is non new now osteochondritis happens in navicular absolutely right and that disease is what is called as gym box disease so now you decide yourself that what had they asked and what should be the answer i just want all of you to understand one very simple thing that 
this exam INICT for most of you will be a kind of a true reflection of who you are, what you have done, how much have you prepared till now. The best part is, which was not there in my time, we used to have November Ames almost at the same time. But then, you know, we used to have all India in the first week of January. So technically, we used to have just December and maybe 15 days more. So we used to have 40, 45 days of interval between Ames and all India. So at that point of time, the learning that used to come from Ames entrance exam, most of the people were not able to implement that in all India because of the lack of time. And you have that advantage. So you still have good time to go, hoping, considering that exam is not going to happen before March. So you have to utilize this time as best as possible. And you have to remember just one thing, that whatever comes easy in your life is not going to last for long. And whatever you feel, you think you want to last long, won't come easy. So it is a difficult journey considering, you know, festivals and everything around. It feels as if it is a very difficult journey because you enter into a kind of a FOMO. But that's okay. That's a part of life. One day you'll be a resident doctor. It is quite possible that in your first year residency, you will be asked to do a duty for 24 hours on any of the festivals. So that's okay. You are preparing yourself for a bigger war in your life, for a bigger aim in your life, for a bigger milestone in your life. So you have to sacrifice a lot of other things. So at this moment, just believe in yourself, believe in your preparation, believe in your strategy. Pivot. The most important word that I want you to remember today is pivot. The moment you feel that your strategy is not right or maybe something is lacking in your strategy and you're not able to achieve a particular desired score in a grand test, pivot. Pivot means make a change. Always be accept, be, be malleable, always accept changes because see, uh, monotony is something which is going to hit you from uh, mid-December onwards. You will not, you will feel that the zeal that you had in January or March or April or June or July, you are not able to have that same zeal. And it is human. It is human. Hota. Kisi bhi kaam ko karte hoi, point ke baada mein lagta hai ki saturation aagi, threshold aagi. To aapko is cheez se apne aapko dur karna hai, aapko apne aapko is cheez se upar uđhana hai. Aur ek baat yaad rakhna, har jang mein, har khel, ek hi kanun hai. Ghozo, andar jau, khel ke kanun samjho, kaide samjho, sabko dekho, aur sabse behtar khel. Every game, every war has a rule. Enter into that game, see everyone, Try to understand everyone, absorb the rules of the game, and then play better than the rest of the people around you. Most of the people are struggling in the same boat as you are right now. So that makes everything same. Sub similar platform, sub similar state of mind, sub similar stage of monotony. strong, I wish you guys all the best and thank you so much. God bless.